What up, people of the world? Special Caesar here coming at you with more sweet video game action. Welcome to Raiders Forsaken Earth. Now, before we get started on this, I just want to offer a huge shout out to all the new viewers and subscribers of the channel. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being here and taking the time to support me. I do greatly appreciate it. Now, having played so much Wasteland 3, I figured it was time to flip the coin and start playing the bad guys of an apocalyptic wasteland strategy RPG. In Raiders, you control a group of raiders, surprisingly enough, who attack caravans and settlements and loot and pillage supplies in order to build up their organization and try and survive. It's pretty cool. It seems to be a blend of Battle Brothers and Neo Scavenger, something like that, two of which are my favorite games, a couple of favorite games. So I figure we should download this and check it out. It seems pretty good. Now, I have played it a little bit already just to get ahead of the tutorial and get an understanding of the mechanics because there's quite a lot of tool tips that you have to read through in order to understand the game. And I wanted to skip ahead of that. So we are going to start a new game. I have only played it a little bit, like I said, so we're going to be doing it on normal difficulty as hard seems to change it so that it is significantly harder. I don't think we're quite ready for that yet. So we're going to do it on normal. As for our totem, you get a choice of three totems. You can go for Terror, which is increased fear for our actions. Uh, the Terror, which is increased XP for all owned units. Or increased hit chance for all owned raiders. Now, this seems nice and Christmassy, and it is Christmas, so I would normally go for that. But I don't think 5% hit chance increase is actually that useful overall. And 100% fear for all actions, well, you actually get enough fear, and fear you only use as an extra currency, so I don't think increased fear is that useful. Whereas 100% XP for all owned units is incredibly useful, in my opinion, because you need an abundancy of raiders to protect and defend and garrison all the settlements that you capture and for all the fighting that you do, because you tend to lose them quite quickly. So the sooner you can train up an army of raiders to max level, the sooner your organization can expand and take over. So I really think double XP for units will be most useful. So we're going to go with that. Um, in terms of our look, we're going to go for female. Aesthetic doesn't really matter because you're very quickly wearing a helmet or something like that, which covers up the, uh, the portrait. And you can't see how you look anyway. But we're going to go with something quite standout-ish. That looks pretty good. And we're going to call ourselves Goth Girl because it's quite a gothic appearance. Now for Origins, we're going to leave it on Scavenger because that gives you plus two to organization and plus two to logistics. And logistics increases the rate of slots of your party by one for each logistic you have. And like I said, Having a, a large squadron of raiders early on is really useful. So we're going to dump all our leadership points into logistics as well. So we can increase our party as much as possible and have as many raiders as we can being trained up nice and early. Um, in terms of our ability, we're going to go for precision wins because that increases our hit chance. And we're going to manage leveling definitely. So she's got only 151 hit points. I wonder if it does make a difference. No, it doesn't. Okay. Why is her hit chance so high then? Normally it's much lower than that. Oh well, we're going to call her Goth Girl. Actually, let's just see if randomizing does. Oh, it does. So if you randomize it, you change your stats get changed. See his stat, he went, his initiative went up and his hit points went up to 110. 100 is pretty good. 48 hit chance is not bad. What I'm trying to do is randomize it so he's got a good amount of hit points and a good amount of hit chance because those two are important. Those two are the most important. There we go, 94 and 60% hit chance. That's pretty good. We're going to go back to female. Our origin is going to be a scavenger, like I said. Our precision wins so that he's got extra precision chance. He's not going to be called, she's not going to be called Worms. We're going to call her Goth Girl. 
There we go, goth girl. Female origin scavenger, so she's got leadership in logistics and organization. Precision wins, so she's got increased critical chance and increased hit chance. Going to manage the leveling. We want 100% XP for all owned units. Like I said, normal difficulty. All of our stats are going to go into hit chance because being able to hit stuff early on is really important. And all of our points of leadership are going to go into logistics so we can increase our raider slots. And that's it. I'm going to start the game. Populating Wasteland. A new leader. As the previous generalissimo of your organization expires bloodily in the sand, you turn and face the others. Cowed with fear and grief, they all stare back at you, understanding that this mantle of command has rightfully been obtained by you, or claimed by you. What you inherit is a raid organization that is in shambles. Your base of operations can barely be called such, having no buildings or fortifications to speak of, and your raiders are so poorly equipped that they pose a threat only to the weakest caravans in the region. Your food and water is dwindling fast, and your other supplies like ammunition, building material, and beer, the most important of the bunch, are also depleted. If you are to survive, you must rebuild your organization to its former glory. You have your work cut out for you. You should first inspect your hideout. So it's quite a basic game in terms of its mechanics and in terms of the depth of what's available to do, but it's got quite a good sense of humour and it's it's quite solid in terms of its gameplay. It's pretty fun. And it is a relatively new game. I think it only came out about a month ago. So it could do with, you know, some DLC, but I'm sure they'll bring that out. The, the developers are quite keen to keep working on it as far as I understand. So it will be done. First thing you do is pause it. Now in the top left we have chips, that's how much money we have. We have zero fear, that's how much fear you have, which is used, like I said, as another currency to demand supplies and things from settlements. We have wasteland vigilance. As vigilance goes up, the hostile, um, the wasteland becomes much more hostile towards you and enemies grow much stronger and resilient. Then we've got the time. Time's important because after 120 days, you get an incursion that comes in to try and attack you, as I understand. That's the end game. That's what you're building to survive against. That's the... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Ultimatum. That concludes the game. Then we've got water. Obviously, you need water. You consume about 20 water a day. Uh, meat, you need meat as well. Only raiders in your party consume meat. Then we've got beer. As I said, beer is really important to keep the morale up of your men. And then ammunition, which is used in combat. So first thing we need to do is look at our roster. I'm not going to bother reading the tutorials because I've already read them. Now the first thing we're going to do is unequip all of our raiders. Uh, clips on the hideout for some reason. Because equipment can be just moved around freely, they don't have like proficiency in it or anything like that. And equipment defines how much hit chance your character, well armor defines how much hit chance your character has and also how many hit points they have and things like that. So what we want to do is we want to create a row in the back who do maximum damage and a row in the front who tank everything. So we want the people with the highest hit chance and a good amount of hit points to be in the back. So he's got 95 hit points and 72 hit chance. So he's going to be a person in the back. Can we change his name? We can. We're going to change him to Shooty. Change his name to Shooty. And his class is going to be a Hellion. Because they're the damage dealers. And he's going to have a gun. You can find a gun. 
Scatter Blast seems to do a good amount of damage. He's going to have Wrapped Armor, I think. Yeah, you can have Wrapped Armor. See, this is how much armor it gives you, the armor bonus. This is how much health bonus you get. This is how much stamina it costs to wear it. And this is the hit percentage and critical percentage penalty when equipped. So I'm just looking to see which one has a good amount of armor. Potato sack, I think, will be good. And then you start with a bunch of widgets, or whatever you want to call equipment, which do different things. So the water purifier gives you plus 10 water per day. So that's something that's quite useful. We're going to equip all of them. But yeah. You can have eight people in your party during the fight and then a bunch of people in reserve. So we need two, we need one more shooter. 78 and 69, that looks quite promising. Oh, he's only got 34 hit points for Selma. That's tiny. Yeah, Lionel. He's going to be our second shooter, so we're going to call him Snipes. So you've got Shooty and Snipes. Whoops, I'm not going to promote just yet. We'll do that in a minute. His perks is going to be a Hellion. And he's going to have a gun. He can have a Scatter Blast as well. You can have wrapped armor as well, and another two and minus four, I think we should go for. We've only got three and minus six. Okay, he'll look cool in a gas mask helmet. See, their hit percentages are really low, so you want to you want to increase their hit chance as quickly as possible, and that's why we've gone for the experience boost. Plus twenty morale per day. We're definitely going to equip the camping lantern. So that's our two shooters. So we need a, then on either side of the back row, we want a couple of healers. Stanley can be medic one. You can have the carbine. You can have patch armor. You can have the top hat. And you can have the compass. And he's going to be a brutician. Because they're the healers. So it's quite important you get your setup right early on. He's got quite a lot of hit points and quite a good hit chance. So he's going to be our frontliner, one of our frontliners. Slit's going to be our other medic. No, his initiative's quite low, actually. You want someone with high initiative, yeah. Oh, why has it gone back to Goth Girl? Initiative 113. Yeah, Tequila's going to be our other medic. And we're going to call him Doc. He's going to be a brutician. He's going to get the other carbine, so he's in the back row. The other patch armor. He can have a Jester Hood. Yeah, he can have the Jester Hood. And a Metal Detector, which gives us extra scrap per day. Right, so that's the backline sorted out. 
For the front line, we want two tanks in the middle and two Hellions on either side. Goth Girl with 94 health and 70 hit chance is going to be a Hellion, because a 70 hit chance is the most important thing. So she's going to be the Hellion on the front row, and she's going to have a two-handed weapon, a very powerful two-handed weapon. Trench Shovel will do nicely. She's our leader, so we want her to have quite good armor as well. So I think the Crusader Armor 9 is our best option. Yep, so she's going to have the best armor. And a Pith Helmet, which I think how she was equipped to originally, but you, don't, you never know. Like that. Now we need two tanks in the middle. 50 health, 34 health. Absolutely pitiful. 54 health. 67 health, 72 health. So these two are going to be our front line of tanks. So he's going to be a masochist. And he's going to be a masochist. 72 health and 62. 67 health and 61. This guy is much better. Jocko is going to be our main masochist. So he's going to have a toothbrush to increase his morale. He's going to have a one-handed weapon. These two are the same, so you can have an ice pick. He's going to have the bone armor, and he's going to have the shield. And for the helmet, he's going to have the tanker helmet. I'm going to call him Tanky. So he's set, and now Slit is going to be our other tank, I think. Yeah. What's another name for a tank? We'll call him Turtle instead. Turtle. I've already picked. Cool. He's going to have a Night Stick. He's going to have Crusader Armor 8. He's going to have a Skull Hat. There's no shield yet. He'll have a shield as soon as we get one for him. And we've got no equipment. Tanky Turtle. Doc. Now we need another Hellion. We've got Croker, who has 54 and 62% hit chance. Selma is just awful with 34 health. I think I'm going to retire her immediately. Yeah, with only 34 health, she's absolutely useless. She's got a high critical chance, but she's going to die really quickly. Six high six, 65% hit chance, a high critical chance, but he's got a high critical chance as well and 50 health, which is much more health than her. So finally, let's look at Croker. Again, 54 health. I don't get why. Oh, because her critical damage is much higher. Yeah, Croker's going to be our other... I'm going to call him Stabby. He's going to be our other Hellion on the other flank. And unfortunately, we don't have a um, another melee weapon. We'll get one quickly enough. For the moment, he can have the end field. We haven't got that. So it's just Selma and Dolores. They can both have spray and praise. Can have wrapped armor and a fry cap. Dolores can have spray and pray, crusader armor, and a fry cap. Right, that is our team fully equipped. Oh, I haven't chosen their... Look at that health, it's minuscule. Oh, 
I'm not going to choose their class just yet because they'll replace the ones. They're going to be our two reserves who are going to replace the ones that um, that fall in combat. So we're going to do that. Garrison. We're going to empty out the garrison. There's no point in having a garrison because you're basically your retreat has a certain percentage chance of being captured of being found out before it can be captured and at the start of the game it's zero so there's no point in having a garrison you might as well just it's hidden so you might as well have them all i haven't selected goth girls um class yet yeah you might as well have them all um or with you so they gain experience don't have any labor we don't have any resources can't build anything because oh we can actually we're going to build a ditch because it's free doesn't cost any resources and our building we've got enough to build something so the first thing we're going to build is the longhouse because it gives you 10 leadership points immediately, which are really, which is really useful to start, and it doesn't cost any, any labourers. So that's that. Uh, let's go back into our party. Goth girl needs to be assigned as a Hellion. She's got no leadership points. Uh, right, we need to sort our formation, which is battle formation down here. Goth girl, tur turtle, and tanky in the front lines. Yep, happy with that. Dolores and Selma can go. So we've got snipes, stabby, shooty, medic in the front lines. Well, no, stabby will be in the front lines soon enough. Stabby can go. So ranged is the back line, so we've got snipes and shooty in the back line, and then flanked with the two medics on either side. And then the front line, we've got two tanks in the middle, and then goth girl on the end. And eventually Stabby is going to come and fill in this slot and be on the other end once we find him a melee weapon. So that's that all set up. Nicely done. What else we got? Black market available. We've got nothing to sell to the black market. Your hideout is undefended and vulnerable. Well, it's undefended, but there's it's no one can find it, so that's fine. Okay, promotions. You can promote people, and that gives them increased stats. So I think I'm going to promote Snipes. He's got 110 hit points. Shooty's got 119 hit points and 64. Shooty's much better. We're going to promote Shooty to Lieutenant. Because that gives him much more initiative and gives him a bunch of stats. And Snipes, who's our next best guy, is going to be promoted to Sergeant. Gives him ten, an extra 10 initiative and one to all other stats. And now we're going to marry a bunch of people. So we're going to marry... When you, give, when you get a spouse, it gives you a random stat bonus to the leader. Don't know what it is until you've done it. So we're just going to marry him to see what you get. And from that we got plus 10 hit points. We're going to marry Snipes. And from snipes we get plus two percent critical chance. That's pretty good. And then the other person we're going to marry is our tank, tanky, because I'm basically marrying the people who are least likely to die. Yeah, tanky. And tanky's giving us plus two percent hit point chance. So we got a bunch of bonuses from that. So that took a little while, but that is everything we needed all set up. That is the initial kind of um, setup that you need to go through every time you start a new game to get your team ready to start raiding. I'm just going through this and getting rid of all the tutorials because getting rid of all the tutorial um, windows that pop up because I've already read them so I don't want them interrupting 
I'll explain what each thing does as we go to it. Okay, so that's everything set up. We're going to save it. New save. And now we basically just start exploring the map. And raining will turn the speed right down. Lizard killers. This locations. So ice side is no fuck with us. Please come trade. So these are basically um, aborigines around the map, which you don't get much from them if you attack. You'll basically die immediately. They don't have any chips. You can recruit from them, but their recruits tend to be subpar, so it's not worth it. We can't demand anything because we've got no fear. We can trade, but they've only got water, meat, and beer, and that's, it's not worth it. You basically want to save your money at the start to buy camels. Once you've bought a load of camels, you travel. You can mount up and you travel much more quickly. It increases your travel speed. So you want to save your money to buy as many camels as possible. So the first thing you want to do is explore the roads and start looking for caravans to attack. The next steps. Spotting a random toilet in the desert, you decide to make use of it. Why not? Enjoying a moment on your own, it gives you time to think. Your raiders depend on you. If you don't keep them happy while also improving your organisation, you won't last long in the harsh wasteland. Being under-equipped and having a hideout that's barely functional, your next steps would perhaps be to start small by attacking some of the local caravans. They carry chips which will keep your raiders content, as well as trade goods which you can either sell or use to build up your operation. Also, they carry water, beer, and food, all things your party will require while traveling. Your next steps will determine the future of your rule and your organization. So basically, you can move to these random locations on the map and scavenge, if you so choose. And from that, you get... Uh, there we go, scavenge. Oh, okay, it's not the ship like I thought it's this. And from that you find scrap and wood and raw materials, but it costs morale to, to salvage those because raiders would rather steal them from a convoy, from a caravan, than scavenge like, like uh, homeless people in the desert. And then you also get these schematics. Schematics, you have to acquire six of each different item you want to build. One of them is an artillery unit and the other one is a land ship which allows you to travel even more quickly than camels so it's important to find these schema schematics as you play apparently because you use them to build um, those two powerful items scavenging blues sweating under the sun while loading up the scavenged material your raiders look extremely unhappy as they do so several cursing under their breath you suppose it does make sense they became violent raiders because they're looking for an easy life not to become a bunch of broken back scavengers you will have to monitor their morale and make sure you aren't ordering them to scavenge too much at least not without balancing the shit work with some sizable paydays even the most disciplined raiders can be relied on to piss and moan but nothing turns one around faster than gaining a few new chips to rub together so you basically have to manage their morale when you increase when you attack caravans and kill people their morale goes up and when you scavenge and do various um, events their morale goes down so you need to keep their morale nice and high otherwise they'll either abandon the organization or challenge you to a duel in which case you have to kill them which is can be quite funny but obviously you need raiders as many raiders as possible so it's not worth letting that happen a strange machine this is the land ship i was talking about you sit under the sun as your raiders bring over the strange schematic that was located earlier. Apparently it is a blueprint for something called a land sale. You have an idea of what it might be, a single piece to a much larger construction project. A machine able to harness the wind in order to travel great distances at high speeds. One thing is certain, building one would sure be dicking around in the desert on foot or on camel. You will have to be on the other lookout for more pieces like this. You will have to be on the lookout for more pieces like this. Excellent, Smithers. So we need to find a. Oh, here we go, a caravan. Greetings, fellow travelers. How can we help you? These are a produce hauler. They've got 647 chips. 
So I will attack them because I want the chips and, and the water and meat and beer that, and the ammunition they carry. So we're just going to attack. Now you're talking to this waste these bastards. Proceed with the fight. Yes. So this is a fight screen. You can auto resolve it, but if you do, your characters tend to die because the AI isn't that great. And on top of that, your back line use ammunition like crazy. So you burn through tons of ammunition and it's just not worth it. It's best to start, just do combat by yourself every single time. So this is the amount of ammunition you have. At the start of the game, it's pretty easy to kill the enemy without, without using ammunition. And you want to save as much ammunition as you can for the mid and late game because that way you don't have to spend resources on acquiring your ammunition. And because the fights at the start of the game are so easy, you don't actually need to use ammunition to kill everyone. Most um, all backliners have the option to throw rocks, which if you look at it, does quite a decent amount of damage. Okay, not as much damage as shooting someone, obviously, but they've got a good chance of doing damage. So if you do um, throw rocks instead of wasting ammunition, it's possible to build up your... Uh, reservoirs of ammunition in the, in the early game so you have plenty for the mid game and late game and the way it works is your health as long as a character doesn't die in combat your health is fully healed by next fight you always go into fights with full health unless they have fortifications so as long as a character doesn't die you don't need to waste ammo killing them you can just um, yeah spam your way through it by throwing rocks so she's going to do a shearing swing, which hit, hits three enemies, which might hit the back row, which it did, which is very nice. He's going to throw rocks at the back row again. Nicely blocked, son. Now, obviously, front row can only hit front row unless they have a special ability. Back row can hit anything, so it's important to destroy the back row as quickly as possible. Uh, because that way, your, your back row can't get hit, so your doctors are safe and your less armoured um, shooters are safe as well. Skull crack, he's going to stun him. Butcher's smile, it's it basically it's possible to keep your enemy stun locked by using your different abilities. He's going to throw rocks. Either by stunning them reducing their stamina to zero so they're exhausted or bleeding them in which case the enemy will waste a turn trying to stem the flow of blood it stops them from attacking and by cycling through each of the different attacks your front liners can pretty much stun lock the front line of their opposition while your back liners deal with the back line if there were more enemies and i was in danger of losing someone then i'd shoot and use ammunition because there's a quite an easy fight and i know i'm going to win it without losing anyone i'm just throwing rocks for the moment Guider Stance, Cleveland, Wild Attack, Hunker Down, Blood Plumber, Strength and Numbers. No, we just could do a standard attack which has 60% chance of hitting. Missed. At the start, everyone has a low hit chance, so see he's stunned. So Bangkok, minus one stamina on target for combat duration and target stamina exhausted. This is what I was talking about by exhausting their stamina. So he's stunned. He's got a chance to attack. So does he. So I'm going to hit him. That's going to exhaust him so that he can't, um, he can't actually attack yet. So the only person who can really attack on the front line is this guy. I'm trying to kill him with my boss, but it's not working very well. Shield Bash is a stun again, but he's already stunned. He's going to be exhausted, so there's no point in shield bashing him. So we are just going to, because he's stunned, we've got a high percent chance of hitting him. We're going to do a heavy swipe, which hit. Yeah, so the back line's defeated. So now these guys are all safe from being hit, and they can carry on just throwing rocks at people. Throw rocks. Now 
Now we're going to go for the eyes because that would reduce, yeah, if that hit reduces his hit chance. So now he's got 15% less chance of hitting us. So it's all about stopping them from hitting you while you deal damage with people. That's the very basics of the game. From what I can tell, anyway. This guy should be dead now, even if I graze him. He'll be defeated, yeah. Throw lots of rocks. Throwing lots of rocks. Uh, let's just finish it. Oh, he can't reach. Oh, he had a suicide vest. So he had a suicide vest as an item. He blew it up, and that took off half the health of all my party. Luckily, it didn't kill anyone, which means everyone survives, and everyone now gets full health. Five, six hundred experience, new level. So normally, they only have 200 experience or 300 experience, but because we've got the experience totem, everyone's going to be getting double experience, and it's going to be leveling up super quick, which is really nice. So general, this is what you gain after each fight. You always gain vigilance, which goes towards the wasteland vigilance. And as it goes up, which the wasteland becomes more and more hostile towards you. 20 fear, as I said, you use as currency. Chips is your main currency. And then you recover a certain amount of water, a certain amount of meat, and a certain amount of beer plus ammunition. So your party recovered eight ammo. If I'd used ammo during that fight, I'd have used about six or seven for ammo, and I'd only have generated one ammo, whereas because I was throwing rocks, I generated eight ammo, and I've now got 38. So it's, it's useful at the start of the game to stock, because ammo is so rare and expensive, it's useful to stock pilot as much as possible, as much as humanly possible, just by throwing rocks instead, because the fights are so easy, instead of shooting. And then we've got a hockey stick, that's awesome, that'll be useful for our other character that needs a melee weapon and a long tube, which is a mod which you can attach to your weapon. And then here, this shows you any hostages and captives and various defectors, people who join your side um, would be. Unfortunately, there are none, there aren't any resources to collect, there aren't any hostages, and there aren't any defectors, so we just leave. A destroyed caravan. The battle is over and the caravan lies destroyed in the sand. As your raiders land, load up the supplies and forage the saddle for chips. You look over at the pile of corpses tossed haphazardly aside. Kneeling down beside them, you, re you recognize an opportunity to let the wasteland know exactly who did this. You mark the bodies with a crude and bloody approximation of your totem. It would certainly put a bit of fear into the hearts of those that discover the caravan wreckage. So you have a choice to either mark the corpses and walk away or walk away. I always go with mark corpses, or I did in the previous run through, because that gives you fear. You grab a knife from one of the stiff hands and start carving your totem into the corpses, announcing your presence to anyone who stumbles across the wrecked caravan. Several of your raiders come over and watch with amused grins as you finish marking up the last corpse. 100 fear gain. So that's quite useful because fear is a currency, as I said. So it's useful to generate fear as quickly as possible. Something else you use fear for is creating laws. Every time you get 200 fear, you can spin the wheel. And according to what it lands on, it's a new law that you can either adopt or decline to adopt. And each fear has a benefit and a negative effect. And you have to weigh out, decide whether it's worth the way weighing up you weigh up whether it's worth acquiring the, the law or not based on its um, benefits and deficits. So that's quite a cool mechanic that I like. Now someone leveled up. It wasn't you. It was Snipes. So the first thing we're going to go for is Digging Death because that just gives you plus 5 damage which is quite useful. And we're going to get his hit chance up nice and high. Always go for hit chance at the start of the game. You need that hit chance to be as high as possible because um, it's, they just they don't hit anything otherwise. Uh, medic is more important to stay alive than hit stuff, so I think we're actually going to go with hit points. We're just going to max out the medic's hit points. Dog of War gives him plus two stamina. Infects if only if 
non-ranged weapon is equipped so that's pointless because he's going to be a ranged person plus five for every dead team member well if your team members are dying you're doing something wrong so that's pointless how's the breath four stamina during combat restores all stamina on use that could be quite useful so we're going to do dog of war to give him plus two stamina and then how's the breath to give him loads of um, stamina so he never runs out of stamina Doc as well is going to go for hit points so that he doesn't die and he's going to be doing the same uh, whoops dog of war to give him extra stamina and now stabby doesn't want that he wants the hockey stick maybe we should call him smacky instead but now if we go because he's got a hockey stick if we go to battle formation there he is he's in the front line already filling out the uh, position that was missed and then we've just got two people in reserve Dolores and Selma who are just getting free XP or hanging out and watching the fights save it after our first battle and we continue let's look for another caravan so it's important to kill caravans as much as possible at the start to gain money to gain fear to gain morale for your um, raiders and also to gain water, meat, and beer, and ammunition to stock up as much to stock up and stay um, on top of it. And then you can go around and scavenge the wasteland for various resources that you need. Excellent, Smithers. Oh, good, they've got no backline. So here shows your reserve. We've got two people in reserve. They'll automatically fill in people that they can when they die. These people have no no one in reserve, so this will be nice and easy. Go for the weakest person to kill them off as quickly as possible, which is that person. Just by throwing rocks. He's going to do the showing swing again to hit three people. Because it's a guaranteed hit that hits three people, which is quite useful. Miss with the rocks, stunned. Nice, defeated him. So we're going to go for the eyes of the guy with the two-handed weapon because he's probably going to do the most damage. And then we're going to take out the middle guy. I think he can only hit, yeah. So they can only hit one or two um, next to them. This guy will be able to hit him and him. This guy will be able to hit him and him. And this guy will be able to hit just him. Oh, he blocked it. Uh, we'll go for the stun, because my attack is not that high. Shield bash, go for the stun. And now their hit chance is much higher because they're stunned. So it's always useful stunning the enemy. You might not get an attack off, but neither do they. And because they're stunned, you have increased chance of hitting them. See, he can't reach, so he can only reach this guy. We need to go for a heavy swing. Oh, we can go for a swing for the fences, which hits all three of them. So we'll do that. I actually probably shouldn't have done that when they're stunned. Should take advantage of being stunned. Whatever. Stop blocking! I'm going to Bangkok so that he can't do anything. And we're going to go for Butcher's Smart to apply bleeding on him so he can't do anything. Uh, he patched the bleeding, that's annoying. We need to finish fight, this fight quickly, otherwise, this guy's going to die. And we definitely don't want that. Obviously. He blocked it again, that's three blocks.
finally defeated him, right. Uh, he's done his shield bash. We're going to go for go for the eyes to reduce his accuracy. And then we're just going to throw rocks at him. Gonna shield hack him, that failed. He's gonna use Blood Plumber to get a 15 health point back. I should have got rid of the bleeding first, whatever. Aha, I didn't block that one, did you, you fool? You didn't block that though. There we go, quick little hit defeated. That was close, I was worried about this guy for a while, but we managed to do it without anyone dying, which is what's important. That's how much experience everyone got. Same as usual, except we carried a diplomat, which doubles the ransom amount of captured hostages. Nice. And a small plate, which gives you plus one armor. Oh, Whiskey wishes to join us. I'll say yes. Celebrating death. You notice several of your readers holding their weapons up around the fire, showing off a, s a series of carved notches on the surface. You are quick to surmise that these are kills they have managed to accomplish in past battles. An interesting idea. You look down at your own weapon with temptation to do the same, understanding that commemorating your own kills would, faster, would foster a bond with your weapon and even perhaps increase its effic efficacy in battle. You decide to make it so and also to decree that all other raiders in your band do the same. Henceforward, kills, both honourable and dishonourable, will be etched into the weapon responsible for all to see. Move out. Fitting in. Scumbag piece of shite. One of your longer tenured raiders mumbles while staring down the defector. The sentiment is understandable. You do not expect your raiders to quickly trust the new Lee added people in your organization but you will need every warm body you can find for the conquests ahead in the meantime both your raiders and any defectors you acquire must find a way to work together perhaps after a few battles they may even share a beer together ah interesting so you always pause it because you don't want time going by as you're flitting around doing extra stuff um i was going to check the defector wasn't i whiskey It's got 75 hit points, 44% hit chance, 30% critical. Yeah, not bad. Not brilliant, but not bad. He can be another medic, I think. Oh, he's already been chosen. What is he? He's a masochist. Right, okay. Four armor for the GI helmet. That can definitely go to Turtle, who's only got three armor. And oh no, we want dark. It's tanky. Sorry. There we go. Tanky can have that. Turtle can have. Well. Wow, the hat's better. Okay. Can have the hat. He looks pimping in that hat as well, so that fits. Tanker helmet is three. What's this? Medium armor three. Okay. Well, he's. A masochist so he can have the helmets we've got no armor he can have the pipe wrench we've got no shields shades plus 10 damage i think goth girl can have that since she's our biggest hitter and you can have the sword to give us extra wood per day four available points for stabby nice risky business don't want that. Digging death plus five damage. Yes, please. Don't want that. Definitely want opposites attract. And we want the hit chance to go up. So we'll do all hit chance. Selma. Selma, what have we got for Selma? He's actually got no armor and Selma's not very good, so... Oh, what Dolores? What is Dolores doing with medium armor? No. There we go. 
you can have Crusader armor because Whiskey is much better than Dolores and Selma. Uh, we're going to keep the Wrapped armor for someone else who's better than these guys because these two are just weak. What am I going to do with you two? I might just get rid of them. 61 isn't bad, but it's 61 hit chance. 47 is nothing. 34 is absolutely abysmal. Yeah, I'm just going to exile her. Sorry, you were too useless. And Dolores. Dolores only has 50 health, but she's got 65 hits, which is pretty good. 93 initiative. No, I think I'll exile Dolores as well. I don't think that decreases morale of anyone. No, everyone's pretty happy still. Because they're just taking up chips at the moment, and they're not very good, so get rid of them. Whereas Whiskey can at least fill in for one of our... If one of our masochists dies, he can fill in for him. Or he can start as a second party, he can be a masochist because he's got a good amount of health. But the other two were just useless. Right, let's go through promotions, perks, leather skin and shield master since he has a shield. That'll increase his health quite a lot. And stats 10, he is a tank, so we're going to go with health. Oh, he needs to get his hit chance up first actually, that was a mistake. Oh well, I'll do it next turn. Uh, turtle, leather skin, and shield master, and his hit chance needs to go up. It's all about killing enemies as quickly as possible in this because they generally tend to outnumber you quite heavily as well. Doc is going to go with how's the breath. And he needs more hit points to keep him alive. Medic is going to go with how's the breath. More hit points so they stay alive. Snipes can go for opposites of track. Increase hit chance for each opponent over 80. And needs hit chance because he's a killer. Shooty can do digging death which gives him plus 5 damage. And hit chance because he's a killer. Oh, his hit chance is a max. Excellent. That's good. Uh, next thing we want is hit points. Get his hit points nice and high so he doesn't die. Goth girl can be plus five damage. And her hit chance needs to go up. Lovely. Leadership points. Um... Let's see, we've already got, well actually we want to max that out, because then we can we can fill up our party and make them all get experience, yeah. So we'll max out logistics first, then we'll do motivation, I reckon, mobilization, motivation, which gives you increased experience gain, yeah. So we're going, for, we're all about the experience in this game, in this playthrough, so we'll try that, we'll try motivation, then we'll try vigilance. Uh, which is no subterfuge yeah lowers waste and vigilance gain 3% per spent which is actually quite useful because if you get 3% per point spent you get 30% so you get 30% less vigilance gain it takes them 30% longer to gear up and fight you which gives you a huge advantage when you're fighting caravans and convoys so that's subterfuge we'll go for so that's that Happy trails. You watch as the exiled raider walks off into the empty desert, completely forlorn, shoulders slumped. Your actions will mean certain death as there is little mercy to be found in the wastelanders for exiles. In the end, you, only you can know for certain why you sent the unfortunate raider packing, it's, but it's done now and it's time to move on. Oh well. Yeah, I sent her packing because she was bloody useless. Anyway, going to save it. Wrap things up here for now, guys. We are coming up to the hour. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and watching the stream. I do greatly appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed playing. This is Raiders. 
We're going to get more going on, uh, uploading much more of this and more very soon. So stick with the channel. Don't forget to leave a like or a comment in the section down below before you go or consider subscribing if you are new to the channel and don't want to miss out on more of that video game in the future. As I said, I'll be uploading much more of this plus a variety of other games on a regular basis, so be sure to check back frequently for updates as the channel grows and develops. Guys, once again, thank you so much for hanging out. See you in the next one. Until then, peace out, and as always, stay classy.